Do you have this We Are Memory Keepers tab punch board just lying around in your craft room that you don't use? Do you also have sheets of scrapbook paper that you just don't know what to do with all these little squares? Well, I've been playing around and I have come up with a way of making index file folders out of the tab punch board. These are just some examples of what I've done. And I've also shown an option of using an envelope punch board and if you don't have any punch boards at all then this is what I've come up with. So let's get to it. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to play around with a page out of this Tim Holtz Ideology Wallflower. I've been hoarding this for quite some time. So I wanted to make some index file folders for a junk journal collection that I'm working on at the moment. And I wanted to bring in some lovely papers because it is botanical themed. So I pulled out this um, paper pad and I was just having a look and at the back they've got these um, pa pages which I've never really known what to do with them so I looked at these three inch by three inch ones and I thought well let's start with that see if there's something I can do with that I also wanted to play around with this we are memory keepers tab punch I bought it a long time ago and I still ha even had it in the wrapping so yesterday I actually took it out of the packaging watched a few tutorials you know, on YouTube and was already disappointed because it was not going to give me what I wanted so I don't like to buy things and then just not use them so I was determined where there's a will there's a way I was determined I was going to make this work and I was going to find a way that I could use this so I played around a little bit and came up with a few different prototypes and these are ones that I've kept I threw quite a few away but I ended up coming up with this so this is just a prototype just a few ideas I had open up and you've got a bit of journaling spot there so first of all I wanted to cut down these pages so that we could use them so if I bring back this one here you'll see that in the background I've got the beautiful panel there on a book page with a little tab <clears throat> so let's cut this down first so I'll get my trimmer out so we've got a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet and we've got three by three inch squares. So I'm just going to get my measure out. So what I noticed is that if I cut this at four inches, so let me line that up, then I would not really lose a lot. I pretty much got most of that in. So I'm going to even maybe just scoot it across a little bit just just to get as much of that in as possible so I've just probably gone even just four and I'm not really good on inches sorry guys but yeah about ten and a half ten and a half centimeters or I guess that would be four and a quarter so if I cut that down like so and then if you turn that over you'll see there that I got the butterfly in and I got the man so I got that. So then if I come across here and do the same thing here, so if I turn my sheet around this way and I'll go to the four inches and I just kind of make a bit of a guess and I look and I think, okay, I have got the nest in and I've got the three eggs in. So we'll just come down and we'll cut that so then I've got these and now you can already see on both sides we haven't really lost a lot I don't know whether Tim Holtz designed it that way but I thought well I'm not going to be chopping a bird's head off or anything like that and then we get this piece left as well so it is directional so you don't really have a lot of choice there so I would just simply just cut these into squares like so 
And then you've got a lovely piece, which is now three and a half inches. And to be honest, I thought that could almost, you just trim a little bit, that could almost just go on the base of a tag. So that is going to be another video where I'm going to use those up. But now we've got these, so let's cut these down into their panels. Okay, so now we have got these. Now let's just check. Yeah, that's going to work. So we have now got these, these panels here that we can use in front of our index card. So you can just decide which, like that's got a butterfly on that side and that one has got butterfly. I mean, I would use that one myself, but you could use that and you could maybe do some stamping and some collage work here. So, um, but you know, you have now cut that sheet down and got some very usable cards that you can use. Well, we're going to obviously use tab punch board. I am going to show you how to also make one on an envelope punch board if you have one of those. If you don't have either one of those, I'm going to show you a way that you can do it without any tools. You could use any scrapbook paper if you've got the Tim Holtz wildflower and you've never known what to do with those three inch by three inch squares, then you can do that or you can just use any other scrapbook paper or decorating method that you want. I'm happening, happening to use this, so that's why I'm doing this today. So you'll need a ruler and you will need a pencil. You will need some scissors. You might need to have two, two sizes, depends. I also used my craft knife, um, some glue glue stick this you might want to do some dis some distressing so I usually go with vintage with the vintage photo so I think that's it and other than that you might just want to have some embellishments so just to the decorating part we'll see when we get there what we end up doing all right so let's get on to making this file now what we're going to do is we're going to play with our tap punch so I've got my piece of book page here. This actual um, book itself, the pages measure, just to give you an idea, that's about 14 and a half centimetres or just under six inches. And the height of the book page is 23, just, just under 23 and a half centimetres and about nine and a quarter inches high. So the actual um, block text is around about 11 centimeters and in inches that would be around about four and a quarter I would say and then the length is 18 centimeters and just a bit over seven inches so that happens to be pretty much the perfect size for what I would like to make so what I do is I just grab two pages which I glue together with some glue stick so I just worry about getting glue on the actual writing area and I don't so worry so much about the edges because that's that's going to get trimmed off so just glue those together and tear that away Then I go and grab my trimmer. I'll just move this out the way for one second and I just very carefully I just come around and I just trim the edges of, of like you know where the writing is. Uh, Try and take care to be as accurate as I can with my 90 degrees so I just you know line up my grids and try and 
do the best I can. This one I will do at 18 centimeters or just seven and a one eighth inch, I think that is. Okay, so these ones we can discard. All right, so now we've got this piece, we can bring out our tab punch board. So you've got various um, elements to the tab punch board. This is what actually you press down and makes your punch marks. Then you've got this little guide here, which sits there, but when you want to use it to punch, you've got a side tab. I think this is called like an alignment bar. You've got your side tabs here, and then you've got your corner rounders. And then if you have a look here, you've got um, small, medium, and large. This is your cutting implement, but I actually don't really use that. I found it easier just to do it with a ruler and just my paper trimmer because I'm modifying. Okay, so the first step I do is I put my alignment bar into the side tab slot. And now I do have to think a little bit <laughs> because I'm wanting to do my tab on this side. I have to turn my tab over my page over and then I just bring it in to the corner and I punch. So we get our first tab. Then I come along and put this away here. And I just align that little punch mark. So this we've got this and then I align that up to my small. And then I punch. Okay, so when I lift that away, you'll see I've got two pieces of paper. This little one here, we can discard, but this one here, we keep. And so what I do is I go and grab my art glitter glue because I find that one to be a nice strong glue. And I just apply a bit of glue to that. And what I'm doing, I'll bring it up close. I'm just coming along and I'm just repairing that little hole it's made. All right, so we've got that. We've we've got that like that. But by the time we decorate this, distress it, sew it, etc., we're not going to see it. Actually, <clears throat> I just moved it up because the reason I don't like. The, um, the tab punchy pattern it creates, uh, it, it has two, and this one comes down lower. It's really weird. You can see it here on the board. You can see how it's higher here, and then it, it comes down a lot lower. So it sort of, it, it is for a planner. Um, I didn't really pick up on that when I bought it, but it's designed for a planner. Um, I'm just showing you here. So you can see it's up high and then it comes down low. But the shape that I like is this shape here. So when you glue, just bring it up to what I would call the shoulder. Just, just align it to that first shoulder there. Okay, so then I get my steel rule and I just align it across there and I just simply get my paper trimmer and I cut and there we have it so I like that shape much better so here we've got some options you can if you if you like the idea of folding it in half then I would come across now if you wanted to get another tab on the back I would fold it up to there Otherwise, what I would do is I would just fold it like that. So when you open up, those two are aligned. Okay, so then this is where we can bring this back because the other feature it's got, it's got like a little corner rounder. So if I put that there into the corner rounder, 
I can come along and I can just round that and then I can come along the back, open it out again and I can round to that. So just quickly, if you have got a envelope punch board, you can take your piece of paper again, so two pieces of paper glued together or whatever you're using, and just in this section here where you punch down where the score guide is, you just come along and you just line this left corner here up to that score line like that and you punch and then you come along you turn it over and then you come along you know say you want your tab just eyeball it punch and then you kind of get that shape there and then you can come along with your ruler and your cutter and you can just cut that little piece there and that still gives you it still gives you a nice file folder effect and then you can come around with your corner rounder so I might use this one here and you could probably just use maybe your small size there and I mean if you wanted to you could do all of them and this one here don't know if that'll fit let's have a look and see if we can get that in there that want to be a bit awkward so you'll probably just have to come and do just one I don't know you I mean you could now that you've got that you could come along with your small scissors and you could just see how it's just got a little bit of an overhang there you could just snip that off so that's a method that you could use without if you did not have the tab punch board and of course if you didn't have any of these tab punches or envelope board you can just simply just get your piece of paper and just fold it in half like so and then you could get some sort of a tab that you've punched out or you know that you might already have and just simply glue it down so let's go ahead and do that just get that glue down there just quickly and just attach it to the first one and the same thing you could come along and get your corner rounder I just think it neatens it and just gives it a nicer look and same thing just open this out and then just get your scissors and just follow that around so there we go so we've got this one here which is using the tab punch board so I'm so happy that I actually can get a use for this and there's other things you can do with this as well um, so I might do another follow-up video just to give you some more alternatives so if you do have this machine and you've not really been using all this board you and you've not really been using it um, there are some other options that you can use with this so that's with the tab punch board that is with the envelope maker and that one is if you know you're just doing it by hand all perfectly good options so now let's get on to and decorate some so let's get decorating I have picked out four that I thought we would uh, decorate so just to save time I have done a little bit of preparation I have um, inked the edges and this one here is just a single sided so we can have another option with this one but I've left this one here so and I've got my panels ready to go so the first step that I would do is I would just go around and ink the edges I remember when I first started um, doing junk journaling which was back in 2018 and I used to see YouTubers giving tutorials and I just used to love watching them distress the edges. I don't know if you like it. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy watching um, 
things being inked or whether you don't but um, I remember I used to like it all right so that bit's done I did notice that it uh, is sort of cracking a little bit on the fold so I'm going to put a little bit of washi tape just to reinforce that so the next step that I would do is before I put one of the panels down I want to stitch around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch open it up and I'm just going to come around and stitch all around here so I'll be back in a sec so I've stitched around the edges like so and while I was there I did the other ones as well just to save time for the video so now it's just a matter of um, picking my panel and gluing that down so let's get that done So how is everybody today? I don't think I've asked as yet, um, but I would love to know what you're working on, what's on your desk. And um, I also want to thank you guys um, as well, because the last couple of videos that I've put up have been doing really well. And I haven't done any videos for a while, so I wasn't knowing what to expect and I actually wasn't really expecting anything but I would like to say thank you so much because you are supporting my videos and that's just so encouraging and makes me really happy thank you so that one is done I think at this point I'm just going to leave that um, just for the purposes of when I um, decorate it in a journal that I can you know whatever the page is going on or going on in that journal because I think that's pretty enough as it is so that's that one and then I thought we would come along and put this one down as well now another option that you can do is um, you can get this distressing tool and again if you don't have a distressing tool you can always use the edge of scissors I just always get worried that I'm going to cut myself <laughs> so but this is a little tip just to help make it look a little bit more vintage and a bit more aged so just come along and do the edges and then you get this white bit of paper and that's when I just come along with the distress ink so you could even if you wanted to you could you could rip um, and pull and tear bits out and curl bits up but um, I'm not going to do that in the sense that this is all kind of neatened edges. Um, so I don't think I will do that in this case. But I have done that before. So I'll just quickly just ink around the edges. Just to cover up the white little bits of paper that's been exposed. It is such a shame to lose the other end, the other side, but it um, doesn't matter. We get to enjoy this one, so you have to make a choice which one you like. <laughs> so we'll get this one down. Just hold that for a sec while that glues and takes. Okay, so that's that one there. So this one I noticed was upside down. This is just the single sided one. So I thought I would do a little bit more decorating on this one. So I've pulled out a few little bits of um, Tim Holtz ephemera pieces. I found this cute um, butterfly. Uh, I found this cute bee. So I thought if we could um, put that little specimen label there and just maybe put the B across there and then I, I saw that this was upside down so on this one here um, I had a, the similar issue and I just kind of cut a panel just to cover over the tab but I thought um, I found this little label there and I've just stamped it filed and I thought that would look quite quite good so I think I'll just uh, distress the edges and we'll get those down. So let's do that. And this gorgeous bee. In fact, um, one of these days I would love to get onto doing a bee journal, but there's just so, only so much time. 
<laughs> so many journals and possibilities. Do you ladies struggle or gents struggle with that as well? Like which one to do next? I'm actually working through my supplies and just all these projects that I've kind of started and then just put aside. I'm going back and I'm just completing them <laughs> one at a time because <laughs> I'm just tired of just having all these piles of stuff everywhere. I just want to get them finished. All right, so we'll get this one down. Tell me if that is a similar thing that you do as well, because I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> All right, we'll get that one there. And then we'll get the B down. Oh, that just looks fantastic. I love that. I love that. <laughs> All right. So this one here, I thought we would quickly decorate together as well. So I have, this is one of the shorter panels and I just wanted to challenge myself a little bit with what I would do with this. So I had a bit of a play around and this is what I came up with. So I am going to distress the edge of this one. And we will get that down. Flower beds externally mixing the soil. How nice. Fresh air like freedom. I love it. I love when that happens. <laughs> All right. So I thought we would do the specimen there. So. Let's. I just thought it might be helpful just to give you some ideas for collage because I know you know I'm certainly no expert at it and um, I appreciate it when people show their process so I hope you appreciate um, me just sort of showing these extra steps and then that way if you're a beginner and you're experimenting then um, this can hopefully give you some ideas. So I made this little tag. I stamped it and put a little bit of thread on the top there. So I thought if we put that there and then perhaps I'll come around and distress this as well. And then we can put that there like that. What do you think? I think it looks lovely myself. I don't think you can really go wrong with Timmy's Timmy's products. <laughs> they look so good as they are anyway. All beautifully grunged up and just so lovely. Easy to work with. And then we'll just pop the flower in the middle there. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at what we've done, what we've achieved. So firstly, I wanted to show you what we've done. So we've got that one there. That was the one that um, if you didn't have any like tools or punch boards at all. So that one turned out like that. This is the one that we did with the envelope punch board. And I'm really super happy with that one. This is a just a plain one in the sense that it doesn't f um, fold open and that's gorgeous I love that one and this one here is the one that we did on the punch board so that's a close-up so you can have a look and this is my prototype so that one you could open up and do some journaling and then I decorated the back side so my thoughts were option one you could do it like that and get some glue glue it down like a pocket and then that way you can open it up for some journaling space so you might need to place a book or something down there you know to, to write but um, that was option one option two was to just slip that in like so and stitch would be a bit hard 
because this book has already been made so I could probably maybe try and glue and then you would have that on the other side as a tuck spot so that's that one there this is the one that we we made with the punch board so this one here if you open it up it's upside down so an option for that could be you could slide that on the edge of a page like that oh that looks absolutely gorgeous the way that's done like that and then that way it doesn't really matter so you could just pop a paper clip there and again you know you could just dangle a charm or something down like that so that's three options this one here is just a single like so you would just literally put that down and use it as a pocket or a tuck spot so I think that's four and then again we've got these ones here this one is again upside down so you might want to pop that on the edge of a page like so and then that's the other side which you could decorate again if you wanted to and I forget what option but we must be up to about option six by now <laughs> so you've got this one here and again you could this is the one that uh, you can just make if you've got no punch boards at all so that can sit like that or it could sit on the edge of a page so guys I hope you've enjoyed this little demo I guess you could call it um, using the punch board we are memory keepers punch board and also the envelope ma maker process if you want and I hope you've enjoyed the video and got some inspiration from this if you've got any questions if I've missed anything um, please just ask in the comments I always get back to everyone and answer comments so I think I'm going to call it a day guys I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and relax for a little bit and thank you so much please like subscribe and share if you found this video interesting and of value and i will see you in the next one thank you bye